Hello, the natural born enemy of all recording artists and recording technicians is audio latency. Now audio latency is a delay you get sometimes where between your recording device and the software itself. So for example, if you were to press a key on your keyboard, you would hear a slight delay in between what you're playing and what you're hearing. Now to some people this might not sound that bad, but imagine this, uh, say you're just on your own playing, let's take the piano for example, it can start becoming really disconcerting, it can throw you off when everything you hear is coming out just a split second after you play it. Even worse than that is when you're recording within a mix. Because you're meant to be within time and keeping in tempo. And what will probably happen is you, you, what you're hearing will come as a delay. And it'll either be recorded as a delay or it'll destroy you off. And it's just, it's a complete pain in the neck. So all recording technicians do everything we can to eliminate audio latency in all its forms. Now on Linux or GNU Linux systems, we've gone to extra lengths to stop audio latency from happening. Uh, we even have go as far as to have a low latency kernel. The kernel is the piece of software that allows the hardware and the software to communicate. So if that is low latency, we're really, really trying to get rid of as much latency as possible. But for this experiment, I would like to see if the desktop environment, which is everything you see in front of you, all those, your Windows Manager and everything, affects it. So let's have a look and see. So to keep the test as scientific as possible, we're only going to be changing the desktop environments. Everything else we want to keep the same. So let's have a look at the base system we're running here. We're running Ubuntu Studio 17.10. 18.04 uh, is the most recent one to come out, but this is still uh, supported within date. So things won't be too different from then on. Uh, we're using the Linux low latency kernel 4.13.045. The desktop environment that comes pre-installed is XFCE 4.12, which is a very great light, lightweight desktop environment. Now, my audio interface is also quite important, uh, so I'm just going to add that in. We are using the M Audio M Track Plus, and that is using USB 2.0, not USB 3.0, not uh, not Firewire, not Thunderbolt, just USB 2. So, obviously, uh, certain things are a bit quicker, but keeping this exactly the same. Now, another good thing about Ubuntu Studio is it comes with Jack pre-installed. And to do our test, we're going to be using Ardor 5.11.0. Now, we're going to be testing two different sides here. As I mentioned before earlier, you can see we've got Jack on the uh, on the left. So we're going to be testing Jack out first, and then we're also going to be checking, testing out a ALSA. So let's have a look at the desktop environments we're going to be testing today. So I've put them into four categories here. At the top here, we have Heavy. So from left to right, we have KG Plasma 5. Uh, Unity, which now is has been taken out of standard Ubuntu, but it's still currently within the within the repos. You can still get it. It's still used by a lot of people, so I'm going to be adding that in. We have uh, GNOME, GNOME Shell, GNOME 3, whatever you like to call it, the current one. Well, our medium is quite interesting because we have Cinnamon, which is based on GNOME, and we have Budgie, which I believe was has somewhat to do with it, though, although it's moving itself over to being more Qt based, which is what Plasma is. And our lightweight ones, we have. Um, Mate, which is actually a continuation of GNOME 2, so much more lightweight. Uh, LXDE, we then have LXQT, or LXQT, depending on how you like to pronounce it, which is the continuation of LXDE, but using uh, QT instead of GTK, which is similar to what Plasma uses and what Budgie are considering using. And then we have XFC, which is what uh, British Studio currently comes with. Then, just for fun, we have some super lightweights here. We have I the iFree Tiling Window Manager, and we have OpenBox. Um... These are these are very 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 lightweight. So according to a couple of tests that have been done, uh, they're a couple of years years old now. We can see that uh, all the ones we're using here they are stacked in a similar way to how I've done them. So with that, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna post the links to those articles in the descriptions. You can have a look for yourself. Uh, but the general consensus still sticks around these being sort of how they are. Now, if audio latency is affected by your desktop environment, we should see that the super lightweights should cause the least amount of um, allowance of latency, and the heavyweight should cause the most. That is, of course, if it works. And that's the whole point of this experiment, to see is auto latency in Linux, GNU, Linux, BSD even, I guess, systems affected by your desktop environment. And if so, obviously, is using a lighter one better. So before we get into the test itself, I've just got a couple of other articles here which I'll be I'll be putting in the description below that do do talk about uh, the desktop usage. They don't tend to talk so much about how it would affect audio usage, but other um, 
audio focused desktop uh, audio focused um, Linux distributions like AV Linux for example use XFCE uh, I think what's the other one uh, KX Studio uses a stripped down version of KDE to try and make it more lightweight because KDE is not always heavyweight uh, you can make KDE itself quite light relatively speaking there does seem to be a bit of a pattern here of audio focused uh, Linux distributions using lightweight desktop environments let's just test this out and see what we get so before we start installing all the other desktop environments, let's have a quick look at the test first. So this is I should be running. My little test session here. Open. Now I'm going to be running both on their default configs. Apart from Jack that I have to just tell it to go to my... There we go. And from this point on, I'll be going on to calibrate audio. And this is the screen we'll be seeing for when we test our audio latency. So this is how it works. You have the output channel and input channel there. Now these are set up to already be for my main input and my main output of my uh, M Audio M Track Plus. Now, what I've got here is I've got a jack to XLR cable going out of the output straight into the input. Now, normally this would give you horrible feedback, but for this, it's actually test the uh, the latency. Uh, I simply set my audio to like a decent level, quite low normally. I click measure, and it'll test the latency in both milliseconds and in samples. Now, with that out of the way, let's get all the other desktop environments installed and get on with the test. To install these other ones, we're going to open up a terminal. Now, before I start typing, I'd just like to say that uh, currently I already have XFCE 4 and GNOME installed. Now, uh, they are not set up to default. So when I actually do run the test, I'm going to be uh, setting them all to default. I'm going to be running everything, at n not at the most stripped back, but rather at the most default configured version of the desktop environment. I feel like that gives us the, sort of, the best chances. So not, not necessarily see, see all of them shine to their best ability, but see what the average user would get. So, we've got ourselves super user access. I'm going to install. Now, first off, I'm going to start off by running those ones. Now, why might I be doing that, you ask? Well, I've actually stripped out a lot of parts of them. So, as I said earlier, to make it as fair as poss possibly can be, uh, I'm going to be dumping on all the stuff I've already got rid of from them, just just to give everyone else a fair chance. So we've got XFC, we've got GNOME. Right, let's do the rest of the heavyweights first. So we've got Plasma Desktop, and we've got Unity. Next, we need the min middleweights. Cinnamon, and now is it Budgie or Budgie? Oh, it's Budgie Dash Desktop. Now, some of them you have to write that next to them to make them work. Uh, so, the middle ones. We've got Marte. LX, well, the middle ones, the light ones, LX DE, LX QT, and uh, what is it? Uh, XFT is already on there. Last, not least, Openbox and i3. And run the packages. Oh, that's quite a hefty lot. So we're going to be adding uh, 1,440 megabytes of space onto the computer. Well, megabytes of space is what this is all going to require just to get all of this running. Now, would you realistically do this? Of course you wouldn't. This is why uh, this is why I'm doing this on uh, on Ubuntu Studio 17.10. As after this, I intend on going up to 18.04. Uh, I just don't have to deal with all the extra bloat and trying to remove absolutely everything. Best thing to do is test out a lot. Uh, I would recommend testing uh, a lot of different environments on um, virtual machines. And then just stick it to the one you like. You don't want to have all the other stuff from all the different environments in there with you. So, no turning back, let's go. There we are, and with that now complete, we're ready to go and do the experiment. Before I go, I just want to, I just want to establish one more thing. I showed you how I'd be doing the experiment. Uh, I'd like to just say that uh, I'm not just going to run the experiment for every desktop environment once. I'm going to do them to a variable of, uh, variable of about either five or 10, depending on how long it takes. And each time, I'm going to log out of the session and re-log back in. I'm not just going to do the one after the after another. And I'll add it up to be the average of that total score to put it together. Because I don't want to give, uh, say, one just doesn't do a good run. I don't want it to have its its chances ruined. So I'm going to give you the multiple times. And then uh, after this, I'm going to put them all into a nice graph. And we'll just see whether there is a difference. And if there is, how big it is. I'll see you on the other side. And we're back. The tests are done. And the results are in. But just before we get to those, there's a couple of things I need to cover first. So first off, uh, on my XFC environment, you probably would have seen uh, a Kongi uh, just running there. Uh, I have disabled that for all the tests. Uh, I went and made sure it didn't launch with any of them. So that's not going to be affecting anything. Also, the command I, I, I ran to get uh, all the environments working, 
uh, for a couple of them, or well, really for for uh, KD Plasma, I needed to uh, add a little extra bit in there because uh, some of the uh, some of the system tools weren't installed. I realised this when I attempted to take a screenshot, and uh, Spectacle wasn't pre-installed. So uh, I just sort of just to make sure everything was on there properly, I did uh, sudo apt install uh, Kubuntu dash desktop, and that seems to do the job. One more thing before we get to the results. A couple of the desktop environments outright refused to run our door. So we were left with just KD Plasma, GNOME, Mate, LXQT, XFCE, i3, and Openbox, which is still plenty. Still, most of them are still there. The interesting part to me was the fact that uh, LXQT didn't work, but LX, no, LXQT did work, but LXD didn't. Um, I also find it quite interesting how UDC, uh, Cinnamon, and to some extent Budgie all didn't work with Ardor, yet GNOME would. Uh, and seeing as they're all three based on GNOME, I thought that, that would, yeah, I thought there'd be some sort of correlation there, but for some reason, standard GNOME works with it. Fine. Now, if, if you're running any of those systems with Ardor, please let me know uh, if you've had any trouble running it and what I can do to make it run, but simply wouldn't run. Try to click on the icon, wouldn't run. When it was, I ran it from the terminal, uh, wouldn't run. Ran it for the terminal with administrators, right? So sudo ardor5 wouldn't run. It's got a lot of errors. I I went into Synaptic uh, and I reinstalled the package. I completely, I purged it and reinstalled it. Works with all the other ones. Wouldn't work there. So, without any further ado, the results. Now, the way, uh, the way that Ardor's uh, test does it is it splits everything into four different categories, and I evaluate, I've uh, elaborated my results from two of them. So the two main parts is a detected round trip latency and systemic latency. I've chosen to run uh, to use systemic latency as uh, for my testing here, but for this, uh, for the graphs, we're splitting everything into ALSA systemic done in milliseconds and done in samples, and then Jack done in milliseconds and samples. Here's our graph. Now you can see that uh, four of them obviously don't have any bars because they failed to run. Uh, this is done in milliseconds, so less is better. And as we can see, the winner here is uh, with just around about 17 milliseconds worth of latency. On average, oh by the way, I did f I did five tests of everything here, uh, testing both parts, and um, and I actually calculated the average because occasionally you'd get one where it'd be a spike where it's really high or a spike where it's really low. And I just wanted to make sure that it was going to be as perfect as possible. As we can see, i3 is the quickest. And out of all of these, oddly enough, LXQT is the slowest. Now, LXQT hasn't had a full release yet. It's still being worked on. Uh, so we, I think we should give it the benefit of the doubt. As it's it's probably relying on a lot of other sources getting it running at the moment. Um, a lot of those sources are related to KD Plasma in some way, being QT. And KD Plasma is the second slowest. It could do Studio Standard while XFC seems to have been a good choice here. Uh, it's the one I favour personally. Uh, so according to this one, according to these results, uh, it's the sort of it's the most standard desktop, shall I say? Because Openbox and i3 are a bit more a bit interesting, especially i3. That's one that involves a lot of keyboard and it's it's tiling. And if if you're more interested, go and have a look. But i3 is actually the fastest. But for for a standard desktop out of, from these results anyway, it's XFC. Let's look at the sample rate. So. Similar results here, really. Uh, yeah, basically the same. Although Marte has creeped forward a little bit more. Bit odd there, seeing as uh, Marte, Marte is meant to be, for most things anyway, it's far lighter than GNOME, but for whatever reason, GNOME just did better this time. And so that's with uh, that's both milliseconds and samples with ALSA. Let's have a look at Jack. It's a bit of a different story. So, for whatever reason, KD Plasma absolutely loves using Jack. And everything else seems to suffer from it. I mean, look at look at the spike that XFCE has had, in particular. Openbox has overtaken i3, and KD Plasma is just shot right down there. So much faster, it's really, it was, it was, it was, I was quite taken aback by that, actually. And then Samples, a very similar story once again. So, there's a, there's gonna be a write-up on this for, on my website, uh, which I will leave links for in the uh, description. So, in conclusion, I think that audio-specific desktop, audio-specific, Lynch distributions such as uh, Ubuntu Studio have probably made the right decision with XFCE. Going into this, having done a couple of mini tests, I thought that it was going to be negligible. I thought I was going to be basically coming out here saying that it was 
that yeah, it doesn't it does so much matter for audio work purposes, which that's what we're using, but it seems to help at least in some way, shape or form. So yeah, depending on depending on which you prefer out of ALSA and Jack, that's gonna make a big a big change here. If 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 you're if you're all about uh going as quick as you possibly as quick as you possibly had and having as little low, uh, latency as possible, go for the super lightweights. Other than that, if you want something that, that feels quite standard and useful, but is gonna be really, really good for your uh, audio, you've got the choice of XFC and KG. Now, uh, there's been rumors for Ubuntu Studio adding an extra desktop environment, and, a, and from what I've heard so far, it's just speculation, it's KDE. And look at these results, that would be a perfect companion to go with XFCE. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, I will add a link to the, um, to the article I'm also gonna write up about here. Uh, and if you uh, if you have any questions, if you think I, I did anything wrong, I should have tried again. Uh, please send me a send me a uh, send me a message or a comment, uh, or even do a video uh, response to this uh, with your own experiment. And let's see if we can work out which desktop environment for certain has the best audio latency and is the best recording on Linux. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and like, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.